So are you looking to build a super cheap VMware environment for your business? Today's video may just be for you. Most HCI solutions in the market require at least three servers. Generally, that's very challenging. What if you have a really small requirement, like a convenience store, remote office branch office, or maybe just a lab? So you may want something really, really tiny. And usually, this is the one that most recommend, the Intel NUX. These are fantastic boxes for home labs, but I don't actually think they carry their weight when it comes to enterprise workloads. So let me introduce you to another option that you may want to consider, this. So Micro's E200. So these boxes run Intel Xeon 6 core processors that are built into the board and it can scale up to 256 gig of RAM. You can actually go with the E300. That boxes scale up to 512 gigs of RAM. With that, it also comes with 10G interfaces as well as 1G interfaces. So hopefully at the end of this video, you get a good gauge of how much it's going to cost you, uh, what is the performance that's expected, and also if this will fit into your existing requirement. So for those who are interested in learning more about this, VMware has a white paper published around this and I'll leave it in the links below. So let's get into it now. So this is the boot device that I've gone with. It's not your usual USB thumb drive. These are SLC thumb drives. They last a whole lot longer from an Android standpoint compared to the usual um, $10 thumb drives that you find. It's uh, 16 gigs. It costs about $35 uh, and I've got them off AliExpress. So just looking at the back of the unit, you have two 1G ports, two 10G, an IPMI port for lights out management, just the usual VGA. It doesn't have HDMI, uh, nothing fancy on the front, very standard, just grills and a power button. Getting into it, as you can see, it's very, very tight from a space perspective. Let's pop this open. So, Four dim slots. I filled two banks, 32 gig sticks each, a little bit pricey but worth the money. And then there's two fans here. Like I said, you can actually put one more fan in there. Uh, it's very, very tight with the cable management, so probably not a good idea. Then you have an N one NVMe M2 slot. There's a PCIe slot, if you can see here, hidden. Uh, you can go with one of those riser cards and then put another NVMe. You also have a passively cool. There is actually a version of this server that comes with an active cool CPU. Um, with that, you probably can kind of cut one of those fans. They are pretty loud. Then you have one SSD. There's actually a cutout here for another SSD, but it's pretty useless in many ways because you see, once you put it on, it actually hits the RAM slots there. So unless you have no RAM, which is unlikely, those are pretty useless. So I'm just gonna put this back on. Let's look at cost. I've just taken list prices from MIT XPC out of convenience. Um, part because I bought the units from them, I thought it was just easy to take that as a base reference. You may be able to get better prices at your local dealers, so please go check it out. But based on the hardware setup that I have and I've just shown you, it costs there about $1,700 everything in for a single unit. If you're gonna go with a typical HCI setup, that's three units of that, it comes to slightly above $5,200. Compare that with a traditional server setup, that's a fraction of the cost of a typical rack mount server. Do bear in mind, you do need a 10G switch. An entry level probably costs you about $1,000 to $1,200. Alternatively, you could actually set up a two-node vSAN. With that, you don't actually need a 10G switch. Just take a cable, plug the two boxes together, and you're all set. So as some of you may know, storage performance is largely based on the media that you put in. Uh, in this case, it's no different with vSAN. So your performance may vary, but let's look at performance that I have in my boxes. Uh, I, I went with fairly standard disk, so this is the numbers that I'm getting. I've also turned on dedupe and compression intentionally to put in the maximum amount of overheads in this setup. So you get a good gauge of how performance is going to look like in the worst case scenario. In my opinion, these numbers are fairly, fairly impressive for a really small setup like this. It should fulfill most of the requirements. I don't foresee you having um, 100,000 IOPS type uh, requirement in a small setup in a retail or an edge cluster in general. So this would fit most of the use cases out there. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of an idea how to set up VMware vSAN 
and HCI on a budget. Most importantly, on supported hardware and something that is supported by VMware themselves. So if you like some of this content, do subscribe and uh, do leave me a comment if you want to see anything else in the future. So till next time, see ya.